Welcome to CSC Guru. Next topic is we will analyze the time complexity of Warshall's algorithm. So this is the Warshall's algorithm. Here they have used three for loops, and k is the outer for loop, i is the inner for loop, and j is the innermost for loop. If all three for loop conditions are true, means this if statement will execute once. And this is the main logic of Warshall's algorithm. In adjacency matrix, if p of i comma j position is zero, means check if p of i comma k position is one and p of k comma j position is one. So if these two positions are one, means we can replace this zero as one. So this logic only. We are implementing throughout the Warshall's algorithm with the help of the adjacency matrix. For example, consider the graph. So this is the given graph. So for this graph, first step we need to find the adjacency matrix. So adjacency matrix is nothing but if there exists a path from one vertex to another vertex, then this position we have to make it as one. If there is no path in the sense, this position we have to mark it as zero. So this logic we need to follow to implement adjacency matrix. In our example graph, consider the vertex A. So from A, there is a path from A to B. So here they have given the directions. So, so we need to consider the directions to implement the adjacency matrix. So there is a path from A to B. So A to B, that is row wise, we need to consider A. Since we are considering the vertex A and column wise we need to consider B. So A to B there is a path. So make the position as 1. And A to C there is no path 0. A to D also there is no path. There is a path from D to A only. So this position is also 0. And A to A also there is no path. So 0. Next, consider B vertex. There is a path from B to D. So, make it as 1. And the remaining positions if we are considering, there is no path to A or C. So, make all other positions as 0. And C if you are considering, there is no path to D, B or A. So, all the positions we need to make it as 0. Next, D if you are considering, there is a path from D to A and D to C. So, D to A we have to make it as 1. D to C we need to make it as 1. And the remaining positions are 0. So, now if you are considering in this adjacency matrix, wherever there is a path from one vertex to another vertex, that is a directed path here. So, wherever there is a path from one vertex to another vertex, that positions we have make it as 1. And the remaining positions, wherever there is no path from one vertex to another vertex, that positions we have marked as 0. So, this adjacency matrix we need to consider. In this adjacency matrix, consider the 0 positions. That is, if P of i, comma j is 0. For example, we will consider i as b, b row and j as a column. So, here p of i comma j position is 0. So, if this position is 0, then consider p of i comma k. So, p of i comma k, k we will consider it as d. So, p of i comma k position is 1 and k comma j position is also 1. So, here k is d. So, k comma j position is also 1. That is p of i comma k is 1 and k comma j is also 1 means we can change p of i comma j as 1. This position we can change it as 1. So, this is the logic we need to implement for Warshall's algorithm. If p of i comma j position is 0 means if it is already 1 in the sense no problem no need to consider anything. If the position is 0 means at that position we need to consider, then check P of i comma k position is 1 and k comma j position is 1. If these two positions are 1 means we can make it this P of i comma j position is also 1. So consider P of i comma j position is 0. 
if this p of i comma j is 0 and p of i comma k position is 1 and p of k comma j position is also 1 means this position also we can make it as 1. So, likewise this logic we need to implement for all the positions wherever it is 0 by considering each vertex that is vertex A, vertex B, vertex C and D. So, if you are implementing likewise for all the vertex in the sense, finally we will get the path for each vertex to all other vertex in the given graph. So, this is nothing but the Warshall's algorithm. Next, if you are considering the time complexity of Warshall's algorithm. So, this is the outer for loop and for this outer for loop we need to implement as so the time complexity if you are considering f of n is equal to for this outer for loop summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, k equal to 0 to n minus 1. And for this i for loop, we need to implement summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, i equal to 0 to n minus 1. And one more for loop is there, that is the innermost for loop j. And for this, we need to implement j equal to 0 to n minus 1. When all these three for loop conditions are true means, this if statement will execute once. So, here if you are considering, we will implement like, first we will consider the jth for loop and for this summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 and for this one i equal to 0 to n minus 1. And this how we need to implement in the sense, this n minus 1, n minus 1 minus this initial value. So, this is the initial value minus 0 plus how many times this loop will execute? One time. So, what we will get? Summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1 and then summation i equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, if this if we are implementing we will get it as n. So, here we need to consider summation k equal to 0 to n minus 1. So, this how we are going to implement. So, when this for loop condition is also true means only one time this if statement will execute. So, consider this n we will take it outside and when this for loop condition is true means that is i equal to 0 to n minus 1, this if statement will execute only one time. So, now we will consider k equal to 0 to n minus 1 and for this, this is n and for this n minus 1, this is the maximum value and the minimum value is 0 plus how many times this if statement will execute only once. So, if you are considering here we will get it as n square k equal to 0 to n minus 1, we will get it as n square. And next to this n square, we will take it outside. So, if you are implementing for this one in the sense, that is n minus 1 minus initial value is 0. Plus how many times the if statement will execute? Only once. So, we will get it as n cube. So, the time complexity of Warshall's algorithm if you are considering, that is theta into n cube. Since we are using three for loops, each for loop the time complexity we can consider like n. So, the complete time complexity of Warshall's algorithm is theta into n cube. So, in this session we have discussed with the time complexity of Warshall's algorithm. In the next session we will move to the Floyd's algorithm that is the advanced version of Warshall's algorithm. Thank you for watching this video.